Hello everyone. In this session, we will discuss the perpetual and the periodic inventory system. Specifically, we'll focus on the periodic because we already covered the perpetual. Those are two different ways to track your inventory and related accounts. Now, why is this important? Well, from a journal entry perspective and an accounting perspective, we record inventory differently depending whether we are using a perpetual or a periodic inventory system. And, for, and from a business standpoint, it affects decision making. The perpetual inventory system, as we saw, is more advanced and updates in real time. So you always have the most current information available. Let me explain with an analogy. Think of a perpetual inventory system as constantly checking your fridge every time you take something out as a snack. You know exactly what's left without needing to empty the fridge to count it all. On the other hand, the periodic inventory system works differently. It's like waiting till the end of the week to open the fridge and count all the food. Hmm, we're getting hungry here. You don't check and update every time you take something out if you are using a periodic. That's why it's called a periodic. Periodic means interval. You schedule something. You schedule the count on weekly, monthly, whatever that is, but not in real time. So in this session, we will work an example using journal entries, explaining the two systems side by side, at the end, we'll work a multiple choice question. Make sure you know the difference. Make sure you know the basic journal entries. Let's go ahead and get started. Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, FarhatLectures.com. Our financial accounting course is best for online students and students who are struggling in their financial accounting courses. We cover all the essentials from debits and credits, adjusting entries, closing entries, financial statements, and all balance sheet accounts. Our comprehensive course include lectures, multiple choice, true-false, as well as practical exercises. Start your free trial today to help you pass your financial accounting course. Your success starts here. Let's start by define and discuss the perpetual inventory systems that we learned about in prior session. Remember, the perpetual inventory system is where the accounting record is constantly, continuously updated for each purchase and each sale. So you're keeping track of your inventory up to date. It's gonna provide you immediate access to information on sales and inventory. What does that mean? It means the manager knows exactly what's happening in real time, which is, that's an advantage. Bear in mind, in order to have a perpetual inventory system, you have to have an advanced computerized system. And I would not say it's advanced anymore because perpetual system is practically implemented in any major or even minor retail store. But that's why it's going to keep you competitive. Advance in technology and competitive pressure have increased the use of perpetual system. If you don't have a perpetual system, you are at a disadvantage. And we covered perpetual system and the journal entries in the prior session. Let's take a look at periodic systems. Periodic systems, inventory records are updated only at the end of the accounting period. How? We are going to count the inventory. That's what's going to happen. We're going to count the inventory. During the period, the merchandise inventory balance remain unchanged. So once we count the inventory, then we establish the inventory for the next year and it will remain the same until the end of the period. The cost of the merchandise inventory are recorded in a temporary account called purchases. So you're saying, so what happened if we buy inventory? If we buy inventory, we are going to increase an account called purchases, not inventory and you're going to see what's going to happen to purchases and I already told you inventory is established at the end of the period and the ending inventory will become will become the beginning it will stay remain unchanged until the end of the year then we're going to have an account called purchases and return we're going to ha also keep track of our purchases which is I told you already purchase returns and allowances separately as well as purchase discount and transportation end. So in this system, you are going to see new accounts. Let me list them for you. Actually, they're all listed here. We're going to have a new account called purchases, a new account called purchase returns and allowances, a new account called purchase discount and an account called the transportation end. Those are all new 
that belongs to the periodic system. So what about perpetual system? What about if we have a purchase returns and allowances? What if we have a purchase discounts? What if we have transportation in? In a perpetual, in a perpetual system, we automatically adjust inventory because our inventory is keeping track of continuously in real time, not periodic. At the end of the period, as I started, a physical count of inventory is conducted to determine the cost of goods sold and to determine ending inventory as well. And we're going to see how later on. Bear in mind, during the period, we only journalize entries for revenue. We don't keep track of cost of goods sold. Why not? Because at the end of the period, we'll determine cost of goods sold. And you're going to see how at the end of this recording, matter of fact. And we have the closing entries include updating the merchandise inventory account. So during the closing process, and we're going to see the closing process as well. This is when we establish the ending inventory based on the count. And you will see that as well. So there's a lot to learn in this session. We will start with purchasing and making payment. So on June 1st, we purchased merchandise 2,500 with credit terms 2 slash 10 and 30. Well, under a perpetual system, we increase inventory, we increase accounts payable. This is the perpetual. Under a periodic inventory system, we debit increase purchases and increase accounts payable. Now, purchases is a cost of goods sold account. Eventually, it's going to be closed to cost of goods sold. So I'm going to warn you right now, once we get to the closing process, you're going to see I'm going to close purchases to income summary. Hold on a second. So why are you telling me it's going to be close to cost of goods sold? You can close it to cost of goods sold first. Then cost of goods sold is a temporary account. You have to close it to income summary. So I'm going to close it directly to income summary. Then I'm going to show you eventually when I compute cost of goods sold that purchases goes into cost of goods sold. So but eventually it's close to cost of eventually close to income summary, but you can close it to cost before you take it to income summary. But I'm going to close it directly to income summary. But what I want you to know, the reason I say close, close to cost of goods sold. I want you to think as a purchase, as a sub account of cost of goods sold, a sub account. It means an account related to computing cost of goods sold. Now we made the payment within the discount period on June 9th. Under the perpetual inventory system, we paid $24.50. Under the periodic system, we paid $24.50. And notice every time I indent, that's the credit, by the way. So I credit cash, debit my accounts payable, $2,500 to remove it. And under the perpetual inventory system, I credit my merchandise inventory to reduce my merchandise inventory directly. Under a periodic inventory system, Obviously, I have to reduce my accounts payable by 2,500. However, I have a purchase discount. So let me highlight the accounts that are different. Purchases is different. Purchases discount. Purchases discount is a contra purchase account. It reduces purchases and it's also cost of goods sold account. Eventually, it will be close to cost of goods sold. Then to income summary, I'm going to close it to income summary directly. Then if the customer pay outside the discount period, there's no difference. They have to pay 2,500. They'll pay 2,500 either or. So it doesn't really matter if we pay the outside period. There's no discount and the entry is the same. Let's take a look at return of defective merchandise and freight when it comes to periodic and perpetual. On June 5th, the company returned 500 worth of defective goods. Well, under a perpetual, we reduce accounts payable and we reduce the inventory immediately. Under a periodic, we reduce, we owe $500 less, but we keep track of our purchase returns and allowances in a separate account. So what do we do? We keep track of this account separately. This is also a new account. Purchase returns and allowances is a contra purchase. It's closed to cost of goods sold. It's a sub account of cost of goods sold. So this is how we deal with it. Notice this is also a new account. On June 2nd, we paid 150 for freight. Remember for freight under a perpetual freight in when we pay for something, 
when we pay for something we increase our inventory and we reduce our cash debit inventory credit cash under a periodic system we keep track of our freight separately and what do we do let me highlight in yellow it's a new account we have a transportation in transportation in is a cost of goods sold as you pay for more transportation your cost for that period goes up and we credit cash let's take a look at the sales transaction kind of compare them side by side on June 1st we sold merchandise worth of 3,500 cost 1,400 this is the entry under the perpetual you should be very familiar with it under the periodic your debit account receivable credit sales same thing except we don't keep track of cost of goods sold we there's no entry for cost of goods sold are you saying in a periodic system we don't keep track of cost of goods sold yes we do we compute cost of goods sold end of period so we don't know our cost till the end of the period which is not good because as a manager as an investor as an owner you want to know what is your cost as time goes by under a per perpetual I am keeping track of my cost I'm also keeping track of my inventory not under my periodic system that's why it's an old system it put the company at a disadvantage let's take a look at sales transactions specifically returns and allowances let's assume the customer returned 100 worth of merchandise at $40 well debit sales returns and allowances credit cash under perpetual debit sales returns and allowances credit cash remember this is a contra revenue now under a perpetual we put back the inventory back in inventory because somebody returned an item for us we don't keep track of our inventory also under a perpetual we keep track of our cost of goods sold we don't do that under a periodic so notice the uh, the lack of information real-time information about inventory and cost of sales for the periodic system on June 10th we grant a client $60 allowance debit sales re re returns and allowances credit cash it's the same for perpetual and periodic from an adjusting entry perspective remember um, for cost of goods sold under a perpetual system we adjust cost of goods sold and we adjust inventory for example if you remember if we have shrinkage a nice word for theft or loss under a periodic we don't do that under a periodic when do we adjust inventory when we do the count when do we adjust inventory when we do the count and when do we compute cost of goods sold when we do the count if we need to make any adjustments at the end of the year for sales discount we debit sales discounts credit allowance for sales discount it's the same if we need to make an adjusting entry to estimate sales returns and allowances again it's the same whether it's periodic or periodic or perpetual except except when we, we we don't adjust cost of goods sold we adjust purchases versus we adjust cost of goods sold for any estimated return because I'm gonna highlight the estimate uh, just box the estimated return this is the estimated return adjustment the only difference is we don't adjust cost of goods sold we adjust purchases which eventually adjust cost of goods sold so what I'm gonna show you now is all those new accounts and what happened to them as we close them as we close them at the end of the period so we're gonna go through the closing process for the periodic system remember step one we close sales so let's assume we have sales 450 we reduce sales and we we transfer it to income summary so this is basically one of the steps now in step one also what we have to do in step one in the closing process is establish ending inventory so what's gonna happen is we are going to count ending inventory so we're gonna send someone and ask them to count ending inventory to establish ending inventory so we debit ending inventory as part of the closing process and we increase credit income summary now you're gonna see we're gonna remove beginning inventory as part of the closing process but just follow with me so part of the closing process in a periodic system is to remove ending inventory hold on a second ending inventory is an asset why am I removing this and why, why am I establishing this I'm establishing a new ending inventory and I'm removing the old inventory so I'm just basically taking the change basically into income summary and you're gonna see how later 
also what I have to do is I have to close purchase discount because when I when I establish the purchase discount notice here a purchase discount let's go back here when I received a discount it was a credit it, it reduced my purchases now I need to close this temporary account where am I gonna close it I'm gonna close it to income summary so I'm gonna purchases let me show you the T account purchase discount. Initially, it has a credit of 7,500. Now I need to close it, close it to make it down, go down to zero. Now I reduce it and I credit income summary. I could have also, what did I do? I could have also credited cost of goods sold. But if I credited cost of goods sold, let's assume I did this, then I'm going to have to debit cost of goods sold 7,500 and credit income summary 7500 so debit cost of goods sold 7500 credit cost of goods sold not necessary just go ahead and close it to income summary immediately but what i want you to see is and i i, I keep putting it here you close to cost of goods sold first then you close to income summary i just don't want you to go through the two steps because i think you are competent enough to see this and i want you to see that purchase discount Purchases, purchase returns and allowances, those are cost of goods sold account, which is a temporary account, which, event, which eventually close to income summary. Also, I'm going to close purchase returns and allowances. Same concept. I have 3000 It was a credit. So it's the purchase return is 3000 credit. I will debit it 3000 to bring it down to zero and I close it to income summary again it's closed first to cost of goods sold but I'm not gonna go through this because I'm sure you can see this so this is I will I will undertake this is in step one in step two I'm gonna close all my expenses so I have salaries expense depreciation expense all these expenses I credit them and I debit income summary in addition to the expenses this is where the new accounts are introduced we have to close beginning inventory so beginning inventory for this company was 25,000 where did this number came from well remember in the prior step I established ending inventory this ending inventory becomes beginning of next year now the prior year I started with 25,000 now I have to close it because I established the new inventory. The new inventory is 30. So what I do is I reduce my beginning inventory. I remove my inventory 30 and I replace it with the 30,000. Can I, can I combine those? Sure, I can combine. Sure, I can combine. I can combine this entry with this entry. So if I combine them, all what I have to do is debit inventory 5,000, credit income summary 5,000. So basically, if I if I combine them, so it will be merchandise inventory 5,000, credit income summary 5,000. So simply put, I increased my inventory by 5,000 because the new inventory is 30 it gets added to the existing one but I have it in two entries to show you you remove the old this is the old and you establish the new and you establish the new it's two entries but it could be done in one entry once you know what you are doing also I have to remove purchases which is a temporary account remember when I make purchases throughout the year I debit this account 270 what do I need to do now I need to close it I'm gonna credit this account to bring it down to zero do I have to tell you I can close it first to cost of goods sold? Sure. I can transfer this account first to cost of goods sold. And the reason I'm saying this is because your textbook might do that. So I can credit purchases, increase cost of goods sold by 270, then guess what? Credit cost of goods sold to bring it down to zero and transfer it to debit income summary, which is I end up with this 270 in income summary. So I'm doing it directly transportation in do I have to tell you you can close it first to cost of goods sold yeah let me show you I just want to show you this way you see what's happening here so first if I have transportation in 4500 this is what I had it's a debit 
now I, to close it I'm going to credit this account 4500 and close it first to cost of goods sold then what do I do with cost of goods sold I credit cost of goods sold for the 4500 and I debit income summary I'm sure you can follow now bear in mind I also other accounts I did not show you the closing for because for the purpose of illustration there's not enough on the slide we could also close sales discount and sales returns and allowances those they have a their contra revenue they have a debit account what do you do you credit them and you debit income summary they reduce your income summary step three and step four in the closing process you debit uh, if you have uh, income summary if if you go through the income summary balances from the beginning till the end in this example you will find out you have an income summary so what happened is you have an income summary balance uh, and the balance is 99,500 credit the difference between the debits and the credits what do you do you debit income summary and you transfer it to retained earnings it means this is net income then we happen to have 6,000 of retained earning uh, and, and dividend I reduce retained earning and I reduce retained earnings and I reduce dividend to zero this is just I made up this number so show you to show you step three and step four but what I want to show you next is actually how do we compute cost of goods sold because I kept telling you purchases purchase discounts purchase returns and allowances are cost of goods sold account so let me show you what I mean by that statement so those are the balances that you saw on the journal entries and those are all given beginning inventory purchases transportation in, transportation and in, ending inventory purchase discount purchase returns and allowances the first thing you want to compute when you're computing cost of goods sold is your net purchases so you purchased two hundred and seventy dollars seventy thousand but you had additional cost and additional deductions so what you do is you'll take your purchases you add transportation into it you deduct purchase discount you deduct purchase allowances to get to net purchases so purchases 270 plus transportation because if you pay transportation to transport something it's added to your cost I hope this makes sense you deduct any discount you deduct any purchase returns and allowances your net purchases is 264,000 now we're gonna compute cost of goods sold I hope you know the formula for this so basically transportation purchase discount purchase allowances they all went into the purchase account now we call it net purchase and it happens to be 264 now we compute cost of goods sold what is the formula for cost of goods sold it's the beginning inventory plus net purchases minus ending will give us cost of goods sold simply put we have beginning inventory of 25,000 that's what we started with the net purchases was 264 those two numbers combined we call them goods available for sale 289,000 for the whole year when we counted our ending inventory it happens to be actually ending inventory just to, to be consistent with our computation was 30,000 30,000 so we're going to take 282 289 minus 30 and the reason because I copied the number incorrectly from the slide I don't want people to think why did the ending inventory change just to be consistent since all the numbers that I'm using is from the prior slide so if we take 289 minus 30,000 289 minus 30 will give us of 259,000 cost of goods sold if my math is right 259,000 is the cost of goods sold so this is how we compute cost of goods sold for what system a periodic inventory system we do so at the end of the period why because at the end of the period we would know this important number that I, that I made a mistake with the 30,000 we count our ending inventory so we know our beginning inventory from the prior year we know how much we purchased what was the what was the freight and the transportation what was the discount what was the allowance so we figure out our net purchases we will take the beginning plus what we purchased then we subtract what we have left and the difference between those is our cost of goods sold under a periodic inventory system under a perpetual inventory system there is no need for this why not because we keep track of our inventory in real time 
as we make a purchase as we make a sale as we receive a discount as we go through a purchase return and allowance as we pay for transportation it, our inventory and cost is updated constantly let's take a look at this multiple choice question from farhatlectures.com company D records a purchase of merchandise for 2000 with 100 freight charges under the periodic system what's the correct journal entry to record the $100 in freight so we paid $100 extra for transportation what do we do how do we book this entry what do we debit what do we credit do we debit transportation in do we debit freight expense do we debit merchandise inventory do we debit purchases for the $100 well under a periodic system what do we do we keep track of our freight separately separately means what it means we don't expense it we call it transportation in it's not an expense remember freight for the buyer is part of their cost it's not an expense we don't debit merchandise inventory under a perpetual this would have been correct if you're using a perpetual system and we don't consider it part of the purchases we keep track of our transportation cost separately it means debit transportation uh, debit transportation in which is freight in and credit cash credit cash what should you do now you want to go to farhat lectures look at additional resources lectures multiple choice additional questions that's going to help you in your accounting courses that's going to help you whether you're studying for your cpa exam whether you are studying for your cma exam or any other professional certification invest in yourself good luck study hard and of course stay safe